In this video, we take a look at interior lighting in V-Ray for Blender. I'm going to keep it as simple as possible and show you three approaches that you can take for interior lighting in V-Ray for Blender. So let's get started with the first approach, which is a combination of a white dome light and a sun. I'm looking my scene through a V-Ray camera that has an exposure value of around nine. Hey folks, welcome to MoGraph Plus. This video is a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to V-Ray for Blender. It's a massive 13 hour course where we dive deep into every aspect of V-Ray for Blender, everything you need to know step by step. If you'd like to master V-Ray inside Blender, make sure to check out the full course. You'll find the link right down in the description. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll get notified whenever we post new tutorials and lessons. The lower the exposure value here, the more light will enter the camera. For an interior shot, I normally use something between 8 to 11 and 11 to 14 for exterior shots or shots with tons of direct lighting. Here I'm using 9 to get started and we can adjust it later on. Also a very material with a light gray diffuse color with the RGB values of around 0.8 is assigned to all the objects in the scene. One more thing, if I open up the render settings and go to the GI or indirect lighting tab, as I previously mentioned, the primary GI engine is always brute force and the secondary GI engine is light cache, which has to be for interior shots or better to say difficult shots where we have a small amount of direct lighting and rely on indirect lighting or global illumination a lot because it is much faster compared to brute force mode. But when using IPR or interior rendering, V-Ray only uses brute force as light cache needs pre-calculation before starting the render. To make sure that IPR uses light cache, you need to enable this use light cache in interactive rendering checkbox. We'll learn about GI in the next section of the course. So let's add a V-Ray dome light to the scene and start an interactive rendering session. And again, we are using ASCG as our color space. Obviously the scene is too dark and I know my camera exposure is in a proper range for an interior shot. So let's start increasing the dome light intensity to three, five, I would say maybe around seven. So that is the first step. This gives us a nice overall soft lighting to work with. And if you uncheck effect alpha checkbox under the options tab of the dome light, it won't affect the alpha channel. So you can take your render to Photoshop, After Effects, Fusion, uh, or even the compositor in Blender and simply place your desired background picture behind the window. Now we can add a very sun to the scene. As we have the white dome light, we don't really need V-Ray Sky. So just add a simple sun. Now we can move it around until we get something that we like. We can play around with the direction and the height of the sun to get different looks. So it's up to you. The exact position of the sun would be 8.9 meters on X, negative 8.6 on Y, and 3.2 on Z. This is your most basic interior lighting setup. For the final render, let's stop the interactive rendering and go to the output tab. Set the resolution to 1280 by 720. In the Render Properties tab, go over to the System tab and under Performance section, disable Lower Thread Priority to make sure V-Ray really utilizes the full power of your hardware for the final render. The noise limit can remain at 0.01 as it is a simple scene shading wise. Enable V-Ray Denoiser with Intel Open Image Denoiser. Now we can start a final render. Now let me just stop the render and show you the saved render in the history panel.
looks good very simple setup that gives you a very neutral look you can add more color correction layers like a curve or white balance to make it look even better So that's up to you. Now move the V-Ray Sunlight Collection to the Lights Collection. Let's create a new collection and name it First Lighting Setup. And put all the lights in it. Now I'm gonna disable this collection and move this to the lights collection as well. Let me enable lower thread priority again so we can have a bit more interactive UI and lower the resolution to 960 by 540. The second method involves a simple V-Ray Sun and Sky. So let's add a V-Ray Sun and Sky to the scene and start interactive rendering. Let's place the Sun at the same position like the previous setup and let's start IPR. The setup results in a bit more colors and tones added to the render depending on where the sun is. Now, if I lower the sun a bit closer to the horizon, we will get a lot warmer, darker tones. I can go even lower. Maybe higher again, we can play around. So depending on where you place the sun, you can adjust uh, the camera exposure to compensate. So this setup gives you more flexibility compared to the previous setup. The very sky colors definitely give you richer tones. We can simply replace this boring background with a much more interesting skyline or sky texture in post quite easily. And that's it. We'll skip the final render for this one. You can render it on your own. Let's stop the IPR, rename the new V-Ray Sun Sky Collection to Second Lighting Setup and disable the whole collection. Now let's take a look at another approach using HDR images and V-Ray Sun and this method will give a bit more to work with because you can use different HDRIs and get very different overall tone and feel. So let's add a new dome light and start IPR again. Select the dome light and in the node editor, click on use very light nodes. Add a new very bitmap node and load this, the sky is on fire HDRI. Connect it to the dome color input of the light dome node. We can increase the intensity to 10 probably and rotate it 200 degrees on Z. So that's the result. And now we can introduce V-Ray Sun to the mix. Let's try another HDRI before that. And this time load this Sky Sunset HDRI.
and maybe increase the dome light intensity to something like 25. And now we have introduced all of the colors from this particular HDRI to the scene and you can experiment with a few others. For now let's stick with this one. Uh, we can obviously rotate the HDRI and get different looks by each rotation. Let's leave it at 200. Now we can add a V-Ray Sun. And from the front view, change the height of the sun. Let's position it where we positioned our first sunlight. Can move it around if we wanted to. We can select the dome light and make sure it's invisible under the options tab. You need to have some basic common sense. You don't have to use a very sun all the time. It's not always sunny. So you can stick with a simple HDR image and drive your lighting completely from that and don't use very sun at all. Let's load this Fright Station HDR to get a more neutral look. We can turn off the sun as this HDRI has a sun itself. And let's wait for a bit to see what we get. You can rotate the HDRI maybe around 170 degrees and increase the intensity to 30. We can color correct it a bit if you wanted to. Let's create a new collection and save it as the third lighting setup. So in this video, we learned about interior lighting in V-Ray for Blender. See you in the next one.